In a previous video, I showed you how to connect to the AM2032 or the DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. Today, we're going to be looking at two other sensors, another temperature and humidity sensor, as well as a light sensor. So this over here is a light sensor. It is a photoresistor, which measures different resistance depending on what the light level is. And then the other temperature and humidity device we're going to use is this one over here, which is the BME280. It not only does temperature and humidity, but it also does air pressure. So let's get started. Today we're going to be using a breadboard. Well, actually, we're going to be using two breadboards. And that is because the ESP32, when it sits on top of this breadboard, it doesn't expose too many pins if you look on the side here and well expose no pins on this side so what we need to do is we're going to interconnect these two breadboards you'll find that most breadboards will have on the side these clips and that just allows you to connect them together so once that's together we can take this esp32 let's get the thing plugged in like that and that exposes more than enough pins to do what we're trying to do. We're going to start with the BME280. So it's this little guy over here. And this device connects using the I squared C bus. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what the I squared C bus is. But what you do need to know is that you can have multiple I squared C devices on a single bus and that's quite handy i think up to 127 and what you need to do is just know what the unique address is of each of these devices so once you've got that connected we need to start connecting up things like power ground and also these scl and sda connections it's useful to have a pinout diagram actually i would say it's essential to have a pinout diagram like this and it helps you to find things like the SCL and SDA pin. In my case, SDA is pin IO21 and SCL is pin IO22. So I need to connect that to my BME280. Next up, we're going to connect up the power. We're going to be using 3.3 volts. So find the 3.3 volts pin and get that into the power rail. And we're going to use ground from there. And we're also going to put that into this rail over here, the negative rail. Then we connect up ground to ground, positive to positive. And that's everything connected. We just need to plug it in and write some code so we can get the information from the sensor. Let's start with a blank sketch in the Arduino IDE. The first thing we're going to need to do is install the library for the BME280. We're going to be using the Adafruit library. So just open up Manage Libraries, search for BME280, and it should be the one right at the top. And there we go. You can see mine's installed. So we're just going to put that at the top. We then need to create the BME object, which we do with this line here. So that creates this object called BME, which we can then use to get the readings from our device. As I mentioned before, the I squared C interface needs to address specific addresses on the devices you're connecting to. So if we have a look here, we can see that this here is the actual address for the BME280 that I'm using. And by default, that is the address that will be for yours as well. There is a second address that it could be, which is the 0x77. And that is something that you can actually set on the device itself by shorting out two pins. This is one of the problems, one of the drawbacks with the BME280. If you want to use more than two BME280s on your ESP32, that is going to be a bit problematic because there are only two addresses that you can get from the I squared C interface. And this code here is beginning the connection with the BME280. This exclamation point is basically saying if this returns false, then it's going to print out this line, which is could not find the BME280 and check your wiring. And this here just makes it loop over and over and over. It'll never come out of this. Next thing we're going to do is actually pull the information from the BME280, which we do with this code here. 
first thing we're going to do is get the temperature, which we use that method there. So that's the object, which is calling this method and it's returning the value. So it's just printing that. You can assign this to a variable if you want. And that's probably something that I would suggest if you're doing this with larger sketches. But for this demonstration, we're going to leave it just as it is. Then we've got pressure, which again is the object, the BME object, calling this method. And we're dividing it by 100 to get hectopascals. Then we have humidity here, which is just, again, that method. And it's coming out as a percentage of relative humidity. And we're delaying it by three seconds. So this will run every three seconds. Let's compile and push this to our ESP32 and see what we get. But before we do that, I've realized I've forgotten to do something. And that is to actually begin the serial connection. And let's compile and upload. And let's have a look at the serial monitor. There we go. We can see the temperature, the pressure, and the humidity in my house at the very moment. Let's have a quick look at what happens when I touch the device. The sensor is that little square thing over there. So if I touch it, we should see an increase in temperature pretty rapidly. And we can see that it's gone up to 25 degrees, 25.2 and it'll keep on rising. And as soon as I let it go, it should start cooling down again. There you go. It's a pretty rapid response from the BME280 in comparison to things like the DHT22. Also, the humidity sensor is much more accurate than the DHT22, especially when you're looking at higher humidities. So there still are real benefits to using one of these devices. Next, let's take a look at the light sensor. It changes the amount of resistance it puts out dependent on how much light hits that head. So let's take a look with the multimeter to see that in action. Let's put this on to that setting over there. We can see there that the resistance is quite low when I put this up towards the light. So 400 ohms with the light at that distance. I have a light just above this device. If I take it away, or if I cover it over, we can see that that resistance goes way up. When the light's exposed again, the resistance goes down. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be passing a current from three volts. So we're gonna connect a wire up there. Three volts going into the light sensor, and then on the output, we're going to be putting that through to ground and we're going to be putting that same pin that's connected to ground, we're going to be putting that to one of the GPIO pins, which we'll be using it as an analog input. So to do this, you're going to need to use a voltage divider, which is essentially taking a resistor. We're going to be using a 10 kilo ohm resistor and wiring that up to the ground. We are then going to take power from the 3.3 volts going into one of the pins. You'll then need to choose one of the GPIO pins. I'm going to connect it up to IO34, and that's going to go on the other side of the light sensor. That's it, all wired up. Let's go into the Arduino code and get a reading from the sensor. Reading the sensor is actually rather simple. The first thing we need to do is create a couple of variables. Well, actually we're gonna create one variable and one constant. A constant is similar to a variable in that you can reference this throughout your code. However, you cannot change the value of a constant within code. This over here is a variable, which is an integer, and this is for the value that we're gonna get from our sensor. The next thing we need to do is actually read the value from the pin, which we're doing over here. This is light pin, which is that over there. So it's number 34. We're gonna read it. It's analog read, not digital read, because we're getting an analog value, which is a value on the ESP32 of between zero and 4095. This is because it is a 12-bit resolution. And I believe you can change it to higher and actually lower on the ESP32, I think up to 15-bit. 
just bear this in mind because obviously you need to know what the range is, what the resolution is. For example, the ESP8266 has a 10-bit resolution and that is between 0 and 1023. And then if you're doing this on an Arduino, you have 8-bit resolution. So that would be between 0 and 254. So that's good to keep in mind. You'll see why in just a second. Anyway, that's it for the code. That's all we need to do. Uh, let's push it to the ESP32 and see what we get. And there we have it. The light reading is coming through, it's 3807. And just to show that it is actually showing us a value that is updating live, I'll put my hand in front of it, which will stop the light from getting to it. And you'll see that value go from 3807 down to 1664, 1535. So the value definitely goes down when there's less light. If I put my hand away again, then it should go up. If I point it towards the light a bit more, it should go up in value as well and you see that happening if i take it closer to the light as well you can see that value going up and remember i told you 4095 is the limit well that's what we're seeing over there it's not going to go any higher than that so there you go you can see the light sensor is working this isn't to be an accurate lux meter or a proper light meter in the sense of giving you a definitive value what it is, is to give you a relative amount of light that it's reading. So, for example, the way I use it, I want to know whether the light is above a certain threshold so that I can switch on my pumps or switch on a fan and allow me to do some cool stuff. So that's all this is. It's a very, very cheap device to be able to give you those readings. And it works very well for the purposes that I need. And I'm sure for the majority of the purposes that you'll need. I hope these videos are useful for you and that you're learning a lot. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Until the next video, thank you so much for watching and stay spicy.